Good evening, you're watching the news from the Sultanate of Oman television. First, the headlines. The philosophy of education in the Sultanate is the main reference for setting up education policies and plans. The net profit of commercial banks enlisted in Muscat Securities market exceeds 87 million Omani rials in the first quarter of 2017. And Oman Oil Company and Italian Integrated Energy Company, ENI, sign a memorandum of understanding to explore cooperation opportunities in the projects related to oil and gas. Those were the headlines and now the news in detail. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos has sent a cable of greetings to His Excellency President Dr. Joji Magbe Salashvi of Georgia on his country's National Day. The philosophy of education in the Sultanate was approved by His Majesty the Sultan to be the main reference for setting up education policies and plans and a guidance for continuous development process of the educational system in all levels. The philosophy included 10 main sources, namely religion of Islam, the rural thoughts of His Majesty the Sultan, the state's basic statute, Omani civilization, Omani society, state's future vision, modern educational thoughts, learners' character characteristics, international treaties and charter and modern global causes. It also contains 16 principles included integrated growth of learners, high quality education for all, educating human rights and obligations, research and innovation knowledge and technology community and stability and accountability the main sources of which the philosophy of education was based represented a solid foundation for the educational system it is distinguished with inclusiveness integration genuity modernity and innovation the philosophy of education enhances the citizenship and omani identity The net profit of commercial banks enlisted in Muscat Securities Market MSM increased to more than 87 million Omani rials in the first quarter of the current year. The capitals of the six commercial banks enlisted in MSM increased to more than 1.1 billion Omani rials by the end of last March, which an increase by 79 million Omani rials comparing to the same period of last year. The statistics issued by the Central Bank of Oman refer that the total deposits of the banking sector registered an increase by 7% by the end of last February. In an aim to seek to improve investment opportunities in oil and gas sectors in the Sultanate, Oman Oil Company signed Memorandum of Understanding with the leading Italian integrated energy company ENI to explore cooperation opportunities in the projects related to oil and gas sectors. The Ministry of Oil and Gas has granted an exploration rights to ENI and Oman Oil Company exploration and production in block number 52. The Block 52 is an area of 90,000 square kilometers with a water depth ranging from 10 meters to 2,000 meters. The agreement was signed with the attendance of His Excellency Dr. Mohammed Al Rumhi, Minister of Oil and Gas. North Korea leader Kim Jong-un has overseen a test of a new anti-aircraft weapon system amid mounting tensions in the region following a series of missile tests by Pyongyang. Over the past few months, the young leader has overseen several military drills, including the test firing of a medium-range ballistic missile last Sunday. The Washington seeks to ramp up pressure on Pyongyang to curb its nuclear ambitions. Expressing his satisfaction, Kim said it should be mass produced to deploy in all over the country like forest so as to completely spoil the enemy's wild dream to command the air boasting of their supremacy and weapon almighty. 
The North has carried out two atomic tests and dozens of rocket firing since the beginning of last year in the quest to develop a missile capable of delivering a nuclear warhead to the continental United States. The German Chancellor today said the debate about climate change as the G7 summit were very unsatisfactory with no indications at all at this point whether the United States will remain party to the Paris Agreement. Speaking on the final day of the G7 summit in Italy, Angela Merkel said that there was no consensus on the issue amongst all leaders apart from the U.S. Resisting pressure from European leaders to stay in the agreement, U.S. President Donald Trump yesterday said he will make a final decision next week on whether the U.S. will stay in the Paris Climate Agreement. On trade, Merkel said there had been very tough discussions, but a sensible solution could be reached by committing a support that rules-based international trade system in the World Trade Organization. Actions against terrorism and international conflicts, she said there was a high level of agreement. Emergency teams rushed food and water today to half a million Sri Lankans displaced by the island's worst flooding for more than a decade as the death toll climbed to 151. A government spokesman said relief operations had intensified following a break in the monsoon rains that the medical teams reinforcing hospitals in affected districts, according to the government sources, 111 people still listed as missing, and most victims were killed by the landslides, not the flood waters, as their homes on hillside were buried under the torrents of mud and rock. Nearly 2,000 houses were damaged or destroyed, and people had been forced from their homes and were sheltering in government buildings or with friends or relatives. Still to come in our news bulletin, some 1,700 workers at a South African gold mine are left unemployed. Welcome back to the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. The activities of the first Holy Quran memorization competition in the Wilaya of Adhan concluded in a ceremony presided over by His Excellency Sheikh Abdullah bin Ali Al Katabi, State's Advisor. The contest aimed to instill on the young generation the importance of memorizing Holy Quran and following its teachings and principles. Some 300 male and female participants took part in the competition. The conclusion ceremony included re recitation of some verses of the Holy Quran, some nasheeds performed by the participants. An exhibition entitled Silent Nature in the Governorate of Bremi displayed more than 30 artistic portraits by the Philippine artist Marianne, who is a resident in the Sultanate. The works reflected by the four seasons of the nature. The visitor of the exhibition expressed joy upon seeing the beautiful, colorful portraits and they toured around the halls of the exhibition. It is worth mentioning that Omani Fine Arts Association through such events is keen towards providing an opportunity for the citizens as well as residents to showcase their abilities in art field. More than 60 years, a, min a mining town southwest of Johannesburg sat on one of South Africa's richest gold deposits, but a diminishing return on investment prompted the owner to shut the mine, throwing all 1,700 workers on a job and leaving the site to looters and decay. Here's a report. Left with nothing, Nkutu used to work at a gold mine southwest of Johannesburg. But four years ago, it was shut down overnight. 
We were managing well and eating well. Then this thing started. Life changed. When you don't work and have nothing to eat, it becomes hard. Some 1,700 workers at the Bleifur Eitzicht mine were left unemployed. There was no severance pay and the town itself has since been left to ruin. Communities are simply left in, in a vacuum. You have local government that's not able to step into that role, um, particularly when there's a premature and sudden closure like in the Blayfor circumstance and in any insolvencies, and you have a, a company that simply walks away. It's not an isolated case. These miners live in an abandoned hostel northwest of Pretoria. They were sacked after a wage strike in 2009 and now hunt cats, monkeys and jackals to survive. Many of them are sick. But you have to understand that the suffering from a TB, it needs you to a stomach to be full. But without the food in the stomach, how can you take? You can go to the clinic, they can prescribe you some pills and what, but you can't take with empty stomach. Here, as in Blayfur, the government hasn't stepped in. But in the country's first case of its kind, an environmental NGO has filed a criminal case against the two Blayfur mine operators. The companies have denied responsibility. Whose feet do you lay the, the, uh, the blame for the collapse? And is a corporate enterprise then required to be a, a, a virtually unconditional safety net to also absorb irresponsible behavior on the part of organized labor and maybe um, not particularly well thought through behavior on the part of the regulator? It's a case that could set a precedent for other abandoned mining communities. Mkutu is hopeful the mine will reopen and his children will one day follow in his footsteps. Here are the Ramadan times for tomorrow. Fajr prayers are at 3.55 a.m. and Mahr prayers are at 6.53 p.m. Now for the general weather forecast around the Sultanate, clear to partly cloudy skies will prevail over the governorate of the far rest of the Sultan will have clear skies. Winds will be westerly to northwesterly light to moderate. Seas will be slight to moderate with a maximum wave height of 1.5 meters. the south end of the Vermont television before we enter our bulletin, hear the main points once again. The philosophy of education in the south end is the main reference for setting up education policies and plans. The net profit of commercial banks enlisted in Muscat Securities market exceed 87 million Omani reals in the first quarter of 2017. 
and Oman Oil Company and Italian Integrated Energy Company, ENI, sign a memorandum of understanding to explore cooperation opportunities in the projects of related to oil and gas. With that, we come to the end of tonight's news bulletin. From all of us here at the studios and the newsroom, it's good night.